Uh, so it is, uh, it is a great pleasure for us to be here for our 13th uh, distinguished annual lecture, which it's actually very hard for me to believe we've gotten to 13 annual lectures already. Um, but this year we have Paola de Quino um, with us. She got her PhD at Oxford and has had visiting positions in, in a, a number of places, including MSRI, the University of Paris, the University of Constance, and at the University of Notre Dame. Um, she is a, a world expert in working in uh, weak systems of arithmetic. And today we're delighted to have her here to talk about algebraic constructions in models of piano arithmetic and its weak fragments. So let's welcome Paola and we look forward to your talk. Thank you very much, Rita. Thank you very much for inviting me for this uh, too big presentation of me. Um, Okay, uh, so as you said, uh, I will try to give um, some basic algebraic constructions that we have in algebra to see what happens in the, uh, in the setting of piano models of piano arithmetic and I touch a bit on uh, weak fragments. And this is, I will review a few things uh, which are already known and some uh, recent uh, work uh, which uh, I'm, I'm doing with uh, Angus McIntyre. Okay. Yes, so uh, this is very basic in a first year algebra course, we do these constructions that uh, are just uh, for making some examples. Uh, we may start with a, a group and we take um, better an abelian group and we take a subgroup and we can make, uh, we can construct a new group the quotient group. And um, I don't say how, because this, this is not important in this setting. Um, then uh, the same thing we can uh, do via starting with a, a ring. In our case would be a commutative ring and with a, an ideal. So a particular subset of, uh, of A and we consider the quotient uh, ring modulo the ideal J. And another example, um, if we start with an A module where A is a ring and we take a sub module so we can construct the, um, the quotient module. So these constructions are very, very basic in algebra. And uh, in particular, I will concentrate on uh, two. So starting from a ring and considering the quotient ring with uh, an ideal. And uh, for rings connected with the uh, piano arithmetic. Okay. Um, I recall, it, I don't know how much people are familiar with the piano arithmetic, so I decided to review some basic notions and what is connected with it. Uh, so the language I'll work with is uh, the one of rings containing uh, some, the two binary operations of sum and times, uh, zero and one and uh, an order. And the model of PA is a discretely ordered ring, uh, which I will denote this like DOR, whose positive part satisfies the induction for all definable subsets. So th this is the scheme of induction where uh, theta is any formula which varies in the language, in the fixed language L. And uh, I will not make any restriction when I, in, uh, during the talk, uh, between uh, the positive part and the ring associated. Uh, for models of PA, we usually um, intend uh, mean the positive part of the ring, but for, our, for what I'm going to say, I have to work with the ring associated because I need to, uh, to do algebraic constructions. So I need also the, the negative part of the, of the ring, of the, of the model of PA. And we get uh, the, um, the various uh, subsystems of PA uh, by uh, restricting the induction scheme to certain uh, classes of formulas. And this here, I, I, I wrote some of the main one we, we, we are interested in. Uh, so the, the weakest is I open and, uh, and then we go on in increasing the complexity of the formulas. So I open has uh, induction only on formulas uh, which are Boolean combinations of equality and uh, inequality, inequalities. Um, 
my main interest, it has been uh, in the fragment I delta zero, which, where delta zero denotes the formulas where the, the quantifiers are bounded by terms in the language. And the terms in this language are nothing else than polynomials. Um, the other systems are quite strong. Just for completeness, I wrote them down, but uh, is uh, not particularly interesting. Uh, we could go from a delta zero to PA. Uh, between a delta zero and a sigma zero, there are some um, fragments which are, I will touch on, on them later on in the talk. Okay. So uh, clearly, and the, the natural numbers uh, is a model of PA and uh, of all the other fragments. And for no standard model of PA, we, we mean something which is uh, a model of PA, but is not uh, isomorphic to N. So just for a description of uh, the structure, I can um, represent in this way. We have uh, an initial part, which is a copy of N, and then the dots in red, which uh, correspond to the non-standard part of the model. And here I wrote down, for example, one, one, uh, a model of I delta zero, which can be described as the, the polynomially uh, bounded generated by an element of M. M can be any model of PA, the starting M. Then I take an element, no standard, so among the red dots, and then I construct the initial segment generated by all the standard powers. This is uh, this is a model of I delta zero. And just uh, for an information, this is uh, um, the last one is a model of um, open induction, which was constructed by Shefferson in 64. This has been studied widely and um, I, I will not touch on it, it's just for an example. Okay. So, uh, as I said, I will not make the, the distinction between the positive part and the ring. Um, what a notion which will be crucial in this talk is the notion of a prime, which I recall is uh, as the following definition. Um, <clears throat> if P is a prime, if, uh, uh, I, uh, well, if satisfies the, the following formula. So if it defines a product, then it has to divide one of the two factors. And the associated notion is the one of irreducible, which means that if it is um, any divisor, it has to be trivial. Either it's the X itself or it's uh, the identity. And in models of um, in PA and in, in I delta zero, uh, the two notions are the same as it, it's what, up, what happens also in the standard model Z. Um, there are in the no standard model of PA we have, uh, and also of I delta zero, there are primes which are no standard, primes which are above uh, the initial segment, which is a copy of N. And this follows from the overspill, which is um, um, in, in, in these models of both PA and I delta zero, because if you, you can see these two notions are delta zero definable, the divisibility is, uh, uh, definable via a bound, you need a bounded quantification. Okay, um, for any domain R, uh, where uh, we take a P which is not a unit, we can give a, um, an equivalent, um, um, well, definition, equivalent properties as for prime. So P is a prime if and only if the quotient is a domain and we call P maximal if the quotient ring is a field. And there are some uh, relation among all these concepts uh, which are true in every domain, maximal implies prime, which implies is reducible. The opposite, uh, so the three notions are equivalent uh, in I delta zero and uh, above I delta zero. This is, uh, these are well-known notions. Um, the most um, well problematic or uh, pathological uh, 
um, subsystem of PA is IOPEN. IOPEN is very algebraic and it, it allows uh, um, many algebraic constructions which were introduced by Shefferson. Uh, all these constructions are not available in, um, in a delta zero or in PA because they are, the induction puts too many constraints. Instead, the very little construction, uh, induction in IOPEN allows to characterize the, uh, the, the models of IOPEN in purely algebraic terms. And um, so going back to 89, uh, McIntyre and Marker showed that there are models of IOPEN where there are only standard primes. Uh, the, the two notions of irreducible prime are not equivalent. And there are, for example, infinitely many primes congruent, that all infinite primes are congruent to one mod four, or you can construct another model where all the infinite with infinite primes, I mean, no standard primes. Um, are all congruent to three mod four. So there are very pathological aspects in models of IOPEN. Um, while in the previous uh, fragments, all the notions are the same. Okay. Um, so we know that uh, the, the, the ring Z, which in our context is the standard model of PA, is a principal ideal domain. And uh, um, for, um, uh, for models of uh, PA and um, I delta zero, essentially, we have that uh, an ideal is principal, if and only if. Principal means that is generated by one element, all multiple, all products of one element with the, the rest, with the other elements of the, of the ring. And so, um, in the strong, in the strong, um, in the strong fragments, in the strong theories, and for strong, I can say between from I delta zero on, at least I delta zero is uh, strong, but not too strong. Uh, I will say this a bit more precisely um, a bit further on. Um, so in this uh, in this theory in these theories uh, uh, J is principal if it only if it's definable because you take the minimum element um, because of the induction this exists and um, so there are the, the, the principal ideals are those which are definable and corresponding to the, the to the class where we allow induction to the class of formulas where we allow induction. And for uh, principal ideals, we have uh, that uh, the notion of um, an ideal being a prime and uh, maximal are the same, is what I said also before. Uh, I express in, in another, again, I repeated more or less what I, I have already said. And in, uh, again, in the same paper, McIntyre and Marker proved that even for principal ideals in uh, open induction, this is not the case. So this, uh, what is concerned for ideals in this setting. Okay. So the theory of ideals um, can be also interesting for, uh, axiom from a point of view of axiomatization of these theories. So I recall that uh, with DOR, I denote the discretely ordered rings. Uh, so discretely, I mean, there is um, no element between zero and one. And uh, with DIP is uh, uh, the, the, the sentence which says that every definable ideal is principal. And the DPIP is uh, that uh, a weaker that uh, every definable prime ideal is principal. So um, Wilkie showed that uh, if to the discrete order rings we add the axiom requiring that every definable ideal is principal, we don't get full PA. And uh, instead, I, I proved that uh, by adding the same axiom, actually the, the weaker axiom, which asks uh, the, that the, only the definable prime ideal, ideals are principal, to I delta zero, then we, we obtain a theory which is, um, uh, which is equivalent to PA. And from uh, the two results, we get that uh, adding uh, the axiom DIP to discrete order ring, uh, we don't get I delta zero. As far as I know, uh, we don't know if uh, 
if we consider the maximal prime ideal, the axiom corresponding to the maximal um, ideals, if uh, the definable maximal ideals are principal, if we get the same result as for the prime ideal. Of course, these are different over DOR. <clears throat> So this is just for um, what concerns the ideals, and now I get more to the to the main topic of the co of the of the talk. Um, we start with a model of PA, and uh, we take an element n, and we consider the ideal generated by n. So this n m is the principal ideal generated by n, and we want to analyze from a model theoretical point of view the structure. M over the quotient, M over NM. And both for the standard and non-standard model of, uh, of PA. So there is, um, the first case is when N is a, is a prime element. Um, so over PA, P is prime irreducible, the notions are the same. Then there is the analysis when uh, n is a power over prime. And this is some work um, done in 2020, even if we are still polishing up uh, a bit, uh, still working on it, but the main results were obtained last year. And then there is, um, at the same time, we are working on the, the case where n is composite. Um, n composite uh, means that uh, n can be, um, n is a product of more than two primes, power of two primes. And uh, it's, uh, what is, um, of course it can be a finite number of primes, but also finite from the point of view of the model. So from outside, n composite uh, can mean even divisible by infinitely many primes. Of course, if n is not standard, if n is standard, then it's, clear, it's clearly divisible by infinitely many primes. And to do this analysis, um, we used uh, valuation theory, um, one of the main tools, and some of the, the, the results of uh, ACTS on uh, the theory of finite fields and the classical results and uh, important result in valuation theory due to Axe, Cochin, and Hershoff. So I briefly, in the following slide, I, I just reviewed the basic things, uh, notions, uh, without going to, too much in detail, so what I will mention. <clears throat> uh, for local ring, uh, I mean, uh, is a ring which has a unique maximal ideal and for evaluation domain is a pair where R is a domain and V is a function from the ring, from the domain uh, to, the, or, to an ordered Abelian group, gamma, for example, to Z, as we will see in the following uh, slide for an example. And the evaluation satisfies these basic axioms, these three properties that um, the evaluation of A is infinite uh, if and only if A is zero. It respects, uh, the product becomes um, uh, the addition. Um, <clears throat> so the V of a product of elements of R is the sum of the, of the V of A and B. And uh, uh, the valuation of a sum is uh, greater or equal than the minimum of the two valuations. Uh, attached to um, any valuation, there is a subring of, of R called the, <clears throat> the valuation ring, which is, the, the, uh, which is identified by the elements A of R, which have uh, valuation greater or equal than zero. And this is always a local ring. And the maximal ideal is uh, the elements uh, which have valuation strictly greater than zero. So this is uh, nothing else that the valuation ring minus uh, the invertible elements. And the quotient of uh, RV over MV is called the residue field. And since M is a, is a maximal ideal, this is a field. In the next slide, um, I 
uh, gave a very basic and uh, simple example. Um, what happens, uh, natural valuations. Uh, if we work in Z and um, we take a prime P, so we can uh, define the maximum, the, the highest uh, exponent to give to P, uh, which is a divisor of N. So P to the K is divides N and P to the K plus one does not divide N. And this is evaluation. Um, and this can be in a natural way extended to the rationals. And that of course in Z it takes value in the semi-group N and over Q it takes values in Z. Um, with ZP, uh, ZP is the completion with the, of Z with respect to VP, to this valuation and which can be extended in, uh, in a natural way, which extends in a natural way the VP defined on Z. Um, the completion, because this VP generates a metric, a um, non-Archimedean metric. And uh, QP is the fraction field of ZP. Um, it happens that uh, ZP is the valuation ring in the, uh, according to the definition I gave uh, in the previous slide of QP. And in this case, the, the residue field is uh, FP, the field with P elements. So the theory of uh, uh, the Piadic integers and the Piadic numbers has been widely studied and there are results, uh, fundamental results obtained over the years in this setting. Okay. So uh, I'm considering this, uh, the, the main, uh, the original problem is to understand the quotient M over P to the K, of to M over N to, um, oh, sorry, the M, if M is a model of a PA, you want to understand M over NM, the quotient ring. Um, for powers, uh, let's see what we know, what is known. Um, this is known is uh, in old books. Um, if you start with Z and uh, we consider this quotient Z over P to the K Z, this is an encilian local ring with the maximal ideal uh, PZ over P to the K Z. And this is a first order, both property to be encilian and to be local are first order definable. Encilian is, uh, in, a, in a few words, says that if you can solve, uh, if a polynomial has a root in the, in the residual field, then this root can be uh, lifted also to the, to the above ring. And this I have, um, can be, expressible in the first order language of rings. Um, <clears throat> then uh, what, uh, what is known is that for any fixed prime P, there exists an existential definition in the language of rings of ZP inside QP. But of course, this definition um, depends on P. There are uh, more recent uh, definitions of uh, ZP inside QP, uh, which are uniform. They don't, they don't depend on P. <clears throat> um, and for, uh, if we fix a prime P, the theory of this, uh, uh, of the, this quotient Z over P to the K Z as K varies, this is decidable. And also if you make all the primes varying, the theory of, so all the, all the sentences which are true in all these quotients um, is a decidable, is a decidable theory. Uh, this results and also the last one that the existential theory of all the quotient of Z over MZ as M varies with no restriction of M, it's any natural number, the theory of this is decidable. And these are results obtained in the paper, Elementary Theory of Funnel Fields by Axe. 
Um, so the three results say if if one you if you fix a prime p, you make the exponent vary. Or the second one, if you make the, the prime and the exponent varying, and if you in the last one um, is uh, the existential theory for all m. Uh, one thing which was left uh, open in this paper is on the last page of the paper, if uh, the theory, without restricting to existential theory, um, if the theory of all the quotient of z over mz is decidable, Ax left it open. Okay. So this is what I was saying. The question, and this is asked in, uh, in Ax paper. Um, and this was uh, answered by the Rakshan and McIntyre in an, un in an unpublished note. I, I, I don't know if it has appeared finally, but uh, they proved it uh, using uh, the decidability of the ring of the finite adults. The decidability was obtained by, I can never pronounce his name, Weiss and uh, Weiss Fanning. And uh, what the Rakshan and McIntyre did was to interpret um, all, the, all the quotient of Z over MZ in the theory of the finite adults, getting then as a result the decidability also of uh, the elementary theory of Z over MZ, answering in this way a question of uh, AX, left open by AX in 68. There are uh, theories of uh, uh, finite commutative rings. These are particularly finite commutative rings um, that are undecidable. This was proved by uh, Rabin in uh, uh, 65. And also um, via an interpretation uh, as a corollary of this result, it is possible to construct, um, to prove that the elementary theory of finite local rings is undecidable. So not all the finite rings are decidable. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so we concentrate now on, on uh, I mean, there is a, a title of these frames. Uh, I put the title of each slide, but I, I don't see uh, so this is the case, I guess, for Z, M, uh, a model of PA. Um, so now we analyze what happens for no standard models of PA in the cases where N is equal to P, N is equal to prime, prime power, and N is composite. So uh, first of all, we, in, if we are in a non-standard model of PA, we have to give a meaning to what it means this P to the K. And it is uh, well known that there are formulas, um, in fact, delta zero formulas. I mean, the original one was due to Gadel and then um, Paris and also Jeff Paris and also others found uh, delta zero formulas, which define the graph of exponentiation um, in models of PA. And uh, the formula defined by, found by Paris, Jeff Paris, the delta zero one, gives a meaning also to the, uh, to the expression P to the K in, uh, in a model of um, I delta zero. Uh, the difference, the main difference is that um, I delta zero does not prove the totality of the exponential function. So this defines only the graph of exponentiation, but its um, exponentiation is only a partial function over I delta zero, defined on an initial segment. <clears throat> and uh, see. Um, and in order to analyze the case for n equal to p, um, this was done by Angus McIntyre in a paper uh, that then I will have the reference, I think, later on. Uh, he used the, um, the axiomatization that Axe provided in this paper that I mentioned already in 68, um, where he axiomatized the, the, the K, uh, the non principal ultra filters, uh, ultra product of finite fields. So non-principal ultra product over non-principal ultra filters. 
And these are um, field, fields which are perfect, has a, a unique extension of each degree, and is uh, what is called PAC, which is uh, that every absolutely reducible curve of a K has a, a K rational point, as a point in K. And the fields which satisfy these three axioms are called pseudo-finite fields. Um, so any pseudo-finite fields is uh, equivalent, elementarily equivalent in characteristic zero is elementarily equivalent to a non-principal ultra product of prime finite fields. Not all finite fields, but prime finite fields. And uh, so the, the, the work of, uh, of McIntyre for um, n equal to p, so what he proved is he distinguished between the case of p prime and p no stand, p prime standard and p no standard prime. So if p is a, is a standard prime, uh, trivially this quotient is finite and, uh, and then is a field and is uh, as p element, so it's necessarily uh, isomorphic to fp. And what he proved is that if p is no standard, then uh, p over the quotient p over pm is in fact one of, uh, is elementarily equivalent to a pseudo finite field of X. So it has a characteristic zero. Uh, it has one extension of each finite degree. This argument can be formalized in PA um, because via coding this can be done. Uh, it is perfect. And then it is PAC. Uh, to prove that this PAC is not uh, is uh, quite a, is quite a hard proof. I don't say anything. I want just to say that um, it prove it uses this the following uh, statement. Uh, this in uh, curly in italic that if C is an absolutely reducible curve of genus G defined over the field with Q elements. And then is the number of points in C uh, of C in the final field uh, FP to the M, then there is this bound. I mean, the main thing is that this, the, the proof that uh, M over PM is a PAC uses this uh, italic uh, state in italic statement. And uh, it's possible, I mean, it's um, the genus of the curve, since it's, it's connected with the, with the degree and the degree is a natural number, so all this is a natural number. And uh, um, so he, can, he was able to reproduce the, the proof of X in the, con, in the setting, in his setting of M over P, PM. Oh, it's not easy, but uh, the classical proof um, can be formalized in, uh, in PA. Okay. So uh, exactly that uh, from the result of X, uh, since this is a, a zero, a characteristic zero field, um, it is elementarily equivalent to an ultra product of finite fields. Uh, so Q is a, is a is a prime. So what I want to stress is this is an ultra product of prime final fields. So this is not a power of a prime, but is a prime. Um, and this is a non-principal ultra filter, of course, otherwise it would have been finite. Um, <clears throat> the, the result, uh, what he got also is uh, uh, that uh, this quotient uh, this ring is recursively saturated, both for standard and non-standard prime. And this essentially, uh, because um, um, you can use the bounded sat uh, satisfaction classes, which is uh, uh, available in any model of uh, piano arithmetic. And because of this is bounded, 
um, you can bound all the, um, the partial satisfaction classes become a, a, a general satisfaction class. I mean, any model of PA has a bounded satisfaction class for bounded formulas, but having this P which bounds all the elements where the elements run, then you can make the, the partial satisfaction classes in a satisfaction class for all the structure M over P M. And so he gets recursive, uh, recursively saturated structure. Then um, by a formal, uh, an adaptation of the usual uh, um, proof of the Tenenbaum phenomenon, uh, he proved that uh, the, the operation on the quotient M over P to the uh, PM of the quotient M over PM um, are not recursive. So this is a not, recurs not a recursive field. So it's uh, what he said in this context of piano arithmetic is the subject to the Tenenbaum phenomenon, which means the operation not recursive. Okay. And uh, moreover, um, what, what he was able to show is that for every pseudo finite field, so any model of uh, ax, um, axioms, for any model of ax axioms, there is a no standard model M of PA and a, an ideal such that K is elementarily equivalent to the quotient of M over I. This is um, due essentially to the property of ultra products because um, he, as I mentioned before, um, Ax showed that uh, a pseudo finite field is uh, an ultra product of uh, uh, finite fields. And then, since the ultra product commute uh, with, the, um, <clears throat> with the quotient, then we, you get that uh, M actually is elementarily equivalent to true arithmetic, not only a model of PA, but true arithmetic, because it's elementary equivalent to Z. Of course, not isomorphic, but just elementary equivalent. Then for every pseudo finite field K and every no standard model of PA, uh, there is a, a, a maximal principal ideal such that um, M over I is an uh, elementary equivalent to K. Um, and apart for uh, recursive saturation, then uh, what he was able to prove is that uh, any countable uh, pseudo finite field is elementarily equivalent to, uh, to a quotient, uh, to a residue, uh, to a, um, a field M over P M. So for any recursively saturated uh, pseudo finite field, there exists an M with this property. You have to require that uh, K is a recursively saturated because we saw that all these quotients are recursively saturated and not all pseudo finite fields are in general recursively saturated. So in order in um, comparing with the, uh, with the first uh, statement here of this page, uh, recursive saturation is the only, let's say, the only impediment to have isomorphic, not uh, element, just elementary equivalent. Uh, the elementary equivalent can be substituted by isomorphism in case K is recursively saturated. Okay. Um, for what concerns um, the, briefly, I want to touch on uh, what happens uh, for weak fragments. So what is between I delta zero and the PA? There are these three, which I have, um, 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 which are written here, we, uh, who have been considered in this setting. Um, so exp is the axiom which requires the totality of the exponential function. And omega one is uh, an axiom which uh, is, uh, less strong than uh, exponentiation, which requires that x to the log x is defined. 
Uh, we cannot do very much algebraically in I delta zero is too weak uh, to develop any algebraic algebra. Uh, so, but with omega one, there are quite a lot of, uh, well, not quite a lot, but some uh, results obtained. In this setting, we considered in, in a paper of going back to 2000, that the quotient is a perfect, of course, it's characteristic zero if P is no standard, and then the second property of X that uh, M over uh, PM as a unique extension of degree N. This is obtaining a different, um, not with the classical uh, proof um, adapted, the formalized in this system, but it is much more complicated because uh, here, even with omega one, we don't have enough coding to reproduce classical proofs. Um, and so we had to find uh, some uh, other uh, argument, um, a different proof to adapt and obtain uh, this, the second statement, the second property. This is connected, I want to mention this, uh, with the, the, um, the Fermat-Littor theorem that we don't, still don't know if it is true in I delta zero plus omega one. Of course, it's true in, um, with exp. Having a total exponentiation, then you get uh, almost everything. Uh, but this is still unknown if it can be uh, proved that uh, uh, a to the p is congruent to a mod p for any a in, uh, in m. Um, this follows easily, classically, from the cyclicity of, this, of the multiplicative group, but we don't know if this is cyclic. So this for i delta zero or any uh, extension, immediate extension, let's say, um, is um, not very much known. We stopped only, we were able only to analyze the, the case that it has to prove that it has a unique extension of each degree n. The other property, the PAC is far away, we don't know. Okay. So we go back, we go now to the, the, the quotient rings. Um, we have switched to power of primes. Um, also in the case of uh, M no standard, we can, uh, we have uh, the periodic, we can define the periodic valuation um, as in the classical way, in the same way. We, so it's the highest exponent of P which divides A. Um, and this uh, valuation induces, uh, um, I the VP induces evaluation, which we call truncated valuation, which takes values on, uh, on the segment 0k, because here up to k. Um, what, uh, what, is, what we can say is that in this quotient ring, the ideals, uh, the principal ideals, are generated by powers of pj, of course, with j less or equal than k. And these are linearly ordered uh, via divisibility conditions. Uh, so this is uh, what happens uh, for z over p to the kz, that uh, the ideals, they are, they are all principal and they are linearly ordered. Here we can say that they are linearly ordered, generated by the same power of the prime, uh, but for, for principal ideals. Okay. And uh, what we get is that uh, this ring, as in the case of Z over the case for uh, M standard, this is an Encelian local ring. Um, the, 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 the units are characterized in this way as the, um, the, the cosets where M is uh, co prime to P. And they form, um, and they don't units form an ideal, which is the unique maximal ideal, and so we get that is a local ring. To prove Encelianity, the classical proof can be uh, formalized um, inside M. The the residue field here is um, of this, uh, so this carries evaluation. Uh, uh, with the, the, the values on a truncated, um, on the initial segment 0k. And we can talk about the residue field. These are the three notions associated 
with valuation, um, the value group, and uh, the residue field. And if P is according if P is standard or not, we have that the residue field is either FP, the classical field with P elements, or a characteristic zero pseudo final field. So elementarily equivalent to an ultra product of prime finite fields. Um, <clears throat> any model of PA, both standard and no standard, this is not Encelian. Um, the Encelianity is uh, got when we go in quotient. Okay. So as I said, uh, the analysis of the evaluation, uh, evaluation uh, rings uh, um, is uh, what is, uh, has to be understood is the, the value group and the residue field. So um, we, we studied what we call the TOAGs, the truncated ordered abelian groups um, in, in, a, in a joint work with uh, Derek Shan and McIntyre. And what we proved is that if we start with an ordered abelian group and we take uh, an element tau in G, uh, tau greater than zero, then um, we can use on this initial segment um, in a structure, which we created because it takes the, the right value, which is in G, less than tau, otherwise equal to tau. And we axiomatize the, these truncated uh, order abelian groups. Um, <clears throat> so we find the first order set of axioms in the language having also the, the last element. And moreover, uh, we proved also the opposite that if we start with a um, with model of our axiom, so what is a, a truncated order group, uh, we can find an order abelian group and identify an element in this gamma such that the, the truncated order abelian group we started with is isomorphic to what we get from gamma. So we get a, a set of axioms. Okay. Uh, that was uh, the analysis was for uh, uh, before was just for truncated order abelian group any any order of piano arithmetic we need that the, the values come from a discrete group so what is called the Pressburger model. And uh, the analysis of Pressburger models um, needs to, to have in the language a constant symbol for one because it, this is discrete. If and only if it, it, has this, uh, it satisfies these conditions. The, the second one come from uh, what happens in the Pressburger models, so the congruences modulo n for each integer n. And the previous, the first one says that is discretely ordered and then the element as a, a successor. So we add this two axiom to the TOAG, to the analysis of the general TOAG. Okay. Um, <clears throat> So what we showed, and here maybe I will go since I see that time is passing, um, we have that uh, we proved that um, in, in this, uh, in this uh, language with the adding the last element, what we will interpret for the last element, we need this, that the theory is model complete. It's not complete. Um, it depends on where the last element is, if it is finite or if it is uh, greater than all, and if it is uh, the congruence conditions modulo all the powers of uh, P. Um, we get the elimination of quantifiers using the elimination of quantifiers, which uh, is known for Pressburger models, for which uh, 
uh, holds in the expanded language with all infinitely many uh, divisibility conditions. We have the quantifier elimination. Uh, the, the model completeness uh, follows from this elimination of quantifiers. Okay. So after we have analyzed the, the value group of this uh, quotient, what we get is um, uh, that the ring M over P to the KM, these are rings. So we wanted to get uh, not for, um, to, to find them, to describe them, not per, essentially associated to a model of PA. This was the, the, the goal. And this is expressed in this, in this theorem. So we have that um, uh, any question like this is a ring R, which is ancillion, has characteristic um, if P, of course, is um, not prime. And uh, well, I ramified this is uh, something valuation doesn't matter. And the value group is a, a Z group. And this, uh, the, the quotient is isomorphic to the quotient ring um, R over I for some principal idea of I of R. So I repeat, for given any uh, quotient M over P to the KM, we can find an, a, a ring R, um, which is not connected with, uh, with arithmetic at all. It's just evaluation in seed and domain, blah, 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 which satisfies these properties. And M over P to the KM is isomorphic to this uh, quotient ring. The residue fields are the same of R and of our ring M over P to the KM. Okay. Um, I don't know, maybe I, I won't say this is the proof, but I will just say that to obtain R. Uh, here, this is the R of the statement. We use a result which is very well known for arithmetic, uh, uh, the McDowell and Specker theorem, which uh, um, uh, guarantees the existence of an elementary and extension of M. <clears throat> and then this follows from, uh, from this, from N. We work on this and, uh, okay. I just said what is needed in the proof, otherwise I will not finish. Um, so if M is no standard, I can summarize what we got from the previous in the following ways. Um, this is M no standard. So P can be either standard or no standard. If P is standard from, once we have proved that um, M over P to the K M is isomorphic to that R modulo equation, from result of uh, Axe quotient and a shof, we have that uh, this quotient is isomorphic to a, a quotient ring where S is an element is elementary equivalent to the periodic integers if P is standard. And if P is not standard, then it's isomorphic still to a quotient, but where S is uh, elementarily equivalent to a power series. A power, a power series ring uh, where K is a pseudo finite field of characteristic zero, a gamma is a Z group. So, this is what is the equivalent of what uh, McIntyre had done for the case P. We have an uh, equivalent uh, result for the case P to the K. And conversely, we show that uh, as uh, the, the quotient for any given quotient, this is elementarily equivalent to. Um, a quotient of the model of PA. Um, so if S is, is in the previous cases, um, then the quotient S over alpha S, and alpha of course is a non-unit, is elementarily equivalent to an ultra product of uh, quotient of Z. 
Okay. So I said already, I mean, this is uses heavily the ax caution and shove um, results that um, as in that condition, in both cases, um, in both cases of S, uh, case one and case two, uh, S is elementarily equivalent to an ultra product of ZP. If uh, P is standard, then this ultra product, this ultra filter is principal. And if uh, P is not standard, it's a non principal ultra filter. And uh, in this way, as in the case of P without, uh, as in the, in the case uh, dealt initially by McIntyre, we get that uh, uh, this quotient. Um, we have um, that S is, uh, that the quotient S over alpha S is, element, is isomorphic to some quotient of models of PA. And this quotient of model of PA is obtained as an ultra power of Z. And so not only we have a model of PA, but we have a model of true arithmetic. Um, so this gives, because of the results on the, um, on the PADX, we, we get the decidability of all, the theory of all quotients, M over P to the KM, as M varies among all models of PA, and P varies in M in the primes, and K in M. So the class of all these quotients is decidable. Okay. I know that is, uh, can I have two minutes more? Absolutely, yes, please. Um, so I have um, summarized what I have already said, uh, that the theory of this uh, for any model of, at the end, what we have proved that the theory of uh, the class of these quotients coincide with the, with the theory of the class of the standard quotients. And so we get the decidability of this. Okay. Oh, well, I mean, this is, I don't, uh, I can just say that uh, the, the model theoretic analysis then requires uh, the problems are the decidability, the elimination of quantifiers and the model completeness. So we get all this, uh, maybe not in a very, we get the elimination of quantifiers for the theory is not the best uh, for, of the language because uh, we, we use uh, um, results for uh, encilian value fields due to the FM pass. We use what is uh, known uh, the elimination quantifiers for the Pressburg group. And then uh, for the residue field part. So it's not a very economical um, language to get elimination quantifiers. So we, we hope to improve this. But for the moment, there is elimination quantifiers for the theory of all these quotients in, in, a, in, in a sort, in a mini sorted language, uh, which deals with the, with the field, with, with the ring, with the group, and with the um, uh, residue field. Okay. Um, then we get also that, uh, so R is, uh, is our quotient. Well, this is a uh, K. Okay. Oh, okay. If, um, mm -hmm. yes, so we get also the model completeness but modulo the model completeness of the residue field. Oh, well, not all the, well, yes, this is, and I would like to finish. No, 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 the last one, this I don't want to spend too much time. The last one, I want just to say what uh, is the strategy to, uh, to deal with the case where N is composite. Um, so N is, factorized as powers of primes and depending on S being standard or not standard. So there is a, a result of Pfefferman and Vought which uh, links the satisf satisfiability of a formula in a ring which is a product of rings to the satisfiability of a formula in the language of Boolean algebra in the Boolean algebra of the idempotence of the ring. 
Um, so for the case uh, one, when there are only finite and many primes dividing n, so this is a genuine product from outside and outside the model. This is a genuine product of structure and we can apply the classical result of Pfefferman vote. When we go to, if n instead is um, a product of, an, if s is no standard, then this is not a product of structures because we don't know how to, uh, this is our main problem at the moment to, uh, to internalize uh, inside them the argument of Pfefferman vote. And uh, so we need an internalized uh, theorem of Pfefferman vote in M. And we are working, working on this. I cannot say more on this because it's uh, working going on, but it seems plausible that this can be done. And then we, we, we will switch to, to the Boolean uh, algebra of the impotence uh, to get uh, results in this case of uh, composite elements. And once we have done that, uh, we, we hope to, this is the hope to prove also in this case for any n that uh, the theory coincides with the theory of Z and Z. And, uh, and then this is known now because of the results of um, Derek Shan and McIntyre that this is decidable. So the claim is this, uh, that also in this case, uh, uh, we have for N composite that this theory is uh, uh, decidable. As M varies also among the models of PA. So I have finished, I'm sorry that I went a bit over. Um, All right, well, sorry, hang on. All right. <laughs> Okay, sorry, I, I had the zoom going on two things to, to show the screen and, and that was causing my echo. So now I think I got rid of my echo. <laughs> so um, thank you very much for, for this wonderful talk. So let me let me open it up and, and um, see if people have questions. Well, no, maybe it's a very specific uh, this. Uh... Well, so so let me ask because I, I I was I was curious. So the, I mean, there were a number of things I was curious about. So one had to do with the um, the Fermat's little theorem and 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 using that. So um, I mean, that's it. So you said it's still an open question of whether you can prove that in uh, I delta naught plus omega yeah. one. So. Is it, is it known to be false if you drop no, no, all the way down no, no. to something it's like I, I omega? Actually, no, no, it's open, it's open. It's, it's open, open. So especially even, because uh, uh, it's a very natural and uh, interesting question, um, which I consider a few, quite a few years ago now, um, but it's unknown. Um, it depends. Um, for example, one approach was, uh, I mean, you cannot prove the cyclicity. If you can prove the cyclicity of the, of the multiplicative group, then, uh, but the cyclicity, I, I, well, didn't succeed in proving. Also in the factorization, I mean, you want to show that, for example, there aren't uh, in, um, in a field, there are not more roots of a polynomial uh, more than the, the degree. And this is the, the polynomial, one, one, uh, one proof was in this direction and the difficulty was to prove that uh, x to the, uh, to the r minus one has at most r roots. Uh, because when you go in induction as, as usual, then 
x to the r minus one, when you factorize it, it becomes very long. Uh, even if it's uh, x to the r minus one is very short. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so you don't have any problem in coding. But when you go and analyze the polynomial x to the r minus one plus x to the r minus, that is, if r is no standard, because we are dealing with the no standard primes, then it, it can become too long to be coded and uh, in even with the little like, um, of course in uh, with the exponentiation this can be done uh, but uh, in uh, I delta zero with omega one even we don't know uh, if it's possible to do um, that is a very interesting problem <laughs> left do, open for quite a few years well do you know is it could it, it, is it known can you drop the induction enough that it's known to become false, like an eye open or something like that? Well, in eye open, you usually can construct uh, models uh, very pathological that do this and this and this and this. Uh, so mm -hmm. I'm sure that it can be constructed. Okay. Yeah, it can. I don't know, I mean, at the moment, but I'm sure that it can be constructed a model of eye open, which where it fails. Actually, mm -hmm. I think it is, it does exist. Well, usually with the Shefferson models, you can do many things. There are two techniques, uh, also one introduced by, um, by Wilkie. There are techniques by Shefferson and by Wilkie to construct models of uh, open induction. Um, you do it. I mean, instead, with I delta zero is a bit, um, except the one that I, the polynomially bounded uh, elements, uh, then it's difficult to find to co to have a method to construct uh, there aren't method to construct models um, to work with um, instead open induction is much more flexible and is algebraic <laughs> so so let me see if there are other questions so could I ask a, a vague or I don't know, historical question? So this is a, a very interesting mixture of sort of transporting number theory to into algebra to ring theory versus looking at it as a logical theory. You want to impose, instead of thinking of algebraic conditions, you're thinking about versions of induction to put on the ring. So what is the, what was the, original mo motivation for sort of taking this direction and what did the algebraists or number theorists think about this? <laughs> I, I, maybe there's no good, I mean I, I mean, I could imagine what might happen. Well, but I mean, if I, I can don't... be frank, uh, if I can be frank, um, uh, models of arithmetic are a bit uh, snobbish at the moment. I, I don't know if the Eng English uh, I want as not is snobbed. I mean, people are not too much interested in models of arithmetic. This I mean, oh. uh, which is I don't know. In the seventies, was very fashionable. Yes. I mean, with, um, a big class of uh, structures. But for example, among the model theorists, they don't um, consider it. Um, is against what I do, but I mean, I don't care. <laughs> but uh, they can be snobbish sometimes about models of arithmetic. But it's, uh, as we showed, uh, these fragments, uh, these quotient rings uh, do appear in nature. And, right. um, so they are legitimate. I don't know if I answered your question. I mean, I thought- well, I, I'm willing to grant in an interest in models of arithmetic. Um, what what was intriguing to which I'm, I mean I'm old enough I remember, <laughs> but uh, what was different here was the attempt to connect the models of arithmetic ideas with yeah. the algebra number theory kind of questions. Yeah, because I mean you need uh, tools from uh, right. number theory and algebra and algebra to to yeah. have uh, results. Yeah, for um, because otherwise, just for uh, with induction is not that we can do very much. I mean, uh, right. with algebraic tools, we can describe this as, for a model theoretic analysis, of course. I mean, to to understand the algebraic properties. 
Right, but this this says that if, I, if the less is the lesson here that you need both. That is, just the algebraic tools won't work if you don't also assume an inductive structure on the rings. Yes, because I mean the inductive structure gives you this um, the, um, the existence of these non-standard primes. Right. Uh, yeah. Is a mixture, I think. Right. Yeah. So, okay. Thank yeah. you. It was just a, a, a different different view <laughs> from from for me. I mean, I... <laughs> um, are there are there other questions? So um, let me let me ask. So one 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 other. I, I had one other sort of general question that that um, was that. So at the beginning, you mentioned that kind of in between um, I delta naught and, and and full induction. That that I mean, you didn't talk very much about that range. Like if anything happens, so you're dealing all the way with with models of PA, and in fact, in in a number of places, like even true arithmetic. Right, uh, showed well, that up. That happens that it's uh, actually we, we get something more that is uh, mm -hmm. what uh, the model is actually a model of true arithmetic is elementarily equivalent to a model of arithmetic, not just PA. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, other fragments between a delta zero and uh, a PA, I mean, a delta zero in the, uh, it was identified because it has a correspondence, uh, some pro open problems in a delta zero. Have a correspondent problem in complexity theory, so for this is um, it, it has importance. Uh, it it was uh, studied, and uh, since it not very much can be done in a delta zero, um, it was introduced this um, axiom of omega one, but that is because it, it gives you a bit more power in coding. Of course, if you have exponentiation, you can code and you can formalize by, uh, okay, yes, formalization and coding. Instead, um, either uh, omega one gives you a, a, a part of a, um, a weak pigeonhole principle. And the weak, the pigeonhole principle many times has been uh, used for proving uh, um, results instead of exponentiation for example yeah. so in a sense uh, also this um, this that we do i mean like a, a pigeonhole has been imported from uh, other um, other source uh, also algebraic tools have been imported from other source and used uh, to un to understand a bit more the uh, these constructions, uh, uh, which are natural in algebra, we, these are perfectly good rings that mm -hmm. we can work with, and we want to analyze also the, the properties of the, the rings. But going back to these fragments, um, with omega-1, also you don't have, um, for example, it's not known, uh, uh, what is in omega-1? Um, well, there is a, a weak pigeonhole principle. Uh, you can prove the cofinality of primes. Um, <clears throat> something which is not known for uh, I delta zero. Mm -hmm. We don't know if uh, the primes reach the end of the model. You know that there is a prime, a non-standard prime, but you don't know if uh, it goes through the end of the model. With omega one, yes. And this was um, a result of Alan Woods changing completely, introducing these uh, combinatorial principles um, in order to prove um, results for um, models of uh, I delta zero, a bit more extended. And also I delta zero plus omega one has the same um, open problem mm -hmm. than I delta zero, which corresponds to complexity theory, which have uh, um, correspondent problems in uh, complexity theory, and this makes it interesting uh, to work on that. But I mean, for this algebraic analysis, 
uh, not very much. I mean, I said only what we managed to do only the well, it's perfect is three, then um, that it has a, a, an extension of each finite degree. And this was already quite difficult with Galois theory. I mean, uh, many algebraic tools were needed. Um, I mean, the, I think the, the Fermat Little theorem for me is the one most interesting, which is left open. Mm -hmm. This setting, yeah. So I think the question was that if you're thinking as a recursion theorist and not a complexity theorist, then is there anything? Suppose you go you know, x, you know, okay, of exponent. Suppose you, you you start with you assume sigma one and z sigma zero one induction. So you have the whole recursive. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that distinguishes that from full piano from true arithmetic or full piano arithmetic? Do you see any? Are there any algebraic phenomena that come um, up anywhere in between sigma zero one induction and full piano or even true arithmetic? <laughs> and I, I, my guess is the answer. No one's looked at it, but. <laughs> I, every time there is, oh, you can do almost everything in I delta zero plus omega plus plus x, plus x. and so right. in sigma that's, one. That's, yeah. um, well, I know, for example, that Angus claims that the Fermat last theorem can be proved in uh, PA. Right. I doubt that it can be proved in uh, I delta zero plus omega one, but I don't know. Frankly, I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, usually we say no, everything can be adapted. Uh, yes, for example, the Matiasevich theorem, the um, MRDP theorem, that can be formalized in a delta zero plus x. Uh, it's not known that it can be formalized in a delta zero plus omega one. Um, you, th you think Fermat's last theorem cannot be, cannot be formalized in I delta zero plus s x? I have no idea. Okay. I don't know even how to do it in PA. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing uh, if that was a differentiation. That he claims that it can be done. Right. Uh, so I believe him, but uh, um, I don't think it was. It would be worth trying to do it in a delta zero plus omega plus uh, x. I mean, it's nice to formalize because you have to to find uh, new proofs and um, like, I mean it's much much harder to, to fit in this uh, little induction that you have to formalize with the uh, um, bounded quantifications and uh, the majority of the time I think you go and use uh, tools from um, and results from other fields more algebraic for whatever mm -hmm. it's possible to do that uh, induction doesn't put too many constraints. So we, we would have time for, for probably one more question if, if someone has another question. All right, well, if, if not, then, then let us thank um, Paolo once again for a wonderful talk. Thank you, thank you to all. And it's nice to see all of you.